Purdue going from being one and done last year, losing to a 16 seed and now making it to the final game against UConn. Uh, what do they have, do you think, that can shock the world tonight? Well, first of all, it's it's really amazing when you think about, you know, the notion of a one seed losing to a 16. It was almost it was like the last thing in sports that hadn't happened. And now it's happened twice. And both times it happened, the team that lost went to the national championship game the next year. So there's a lot of poetry in that. There's a lot of life lessons in that. A lot of luck in that, both good luck and bad luck. Um, You know, Purdue clearly obviously has a puncher's chance uh, in this game. Two reasons come to mind. First and foremost, quite clearly, is yes. the big maple, Zach Eady. Uh, <laughs> seven foot four, 280 pounds. Uh, I've been saying throughout the tournament, the most significant facet in the NCAA tournament is Zach Eady's ability to draw fouls. He does it better than any player in the country. And so you have, always have a chance. You know he's going to get you 20 and 12 just by rolling out of bed. He has a chance to go for 40, um, but he has a chance to – significantly alter what you you do as the opponent because of that ability to draw fouls so um he's obviously a problem now UConn uh, does have a player in uh, Donovan Klingon who's better suited to guard Edie than any player in the country especially the way that he's been playing over these last few weeks so that's obviously the matchup that we're all going to be looking for and then you know something I'm not sure the casual fan really appreciates about Purdue is that all season long, they've been the best three-point shooting team in the country by percentage. I think technically they're second right now, but um, you know they were terrific uh, on Saturday night against North Carolina State from three, and they have a lot of different guys, Rich, who can make three-pointers. They, you know, have four to anywhere between four and seven, depending on the game, guys who are able to to, to make three. So when you have the immovable object inside in Zach Eady, and then you surround him with all of these great shooters they could have, you know, one of these really good shooting nights that makes them very difficult to defend. So they can control the tempo, go to 80, get UConn's front court guys into foul trouble, and then shoot uh, efficiently from three-point range. The final thing would be taking care of the basketball, which they did a very poor job of uh, on Saturday night. So those would be the three keys of the game, I think, for Purdue. Yeah, and the photograph we had just showed of of Edie uh, against NC State, and and he's the only human being who could turn DJ Burns Jr. into Muggsy Bogues, right? I mean, look at that. It's it's absolutely remarkable how, and, and, and again, anybody who might be surfing into the men's national championship game tonight, you could tell Edie the minute he he just <laughs> enters the screen who he is. So what is Dan Hurley's plan here? Just run a bunch of people at him, or what do you think tonight, Seth? Well, 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 he's got the personnel for it now. I mean, like you talk about DJ Burns, he's listed at I think six nine two sixty, <laughs> well, not two sixty, obviously. Right. Uh, um. So if he's six nine, he's probably actually six eight. I mean, Zach Edie is actually seven foot four. And so that's seven inches. That's a big deal. Donovan Klingon's seven two, and he's you know not giving up a ton of weight to to Zach Eady, and he's um, far more uh, agile, especially in terms of his defensive abilities. So you know one thing that you do about Eady, you know people talk about stopping him. How do you guard him? Well, a big way to counter him is to make him guard you. And Donovan's abil- Donovan Klingon's ability to come out um, and and play uh, screens and set screens for UConn's guards, that puts the opposing big man in a, in a really tenuous situation. Now, normally Matt Painter um, plays what you know we call drop coverage, which means that the, the, the man who is guarding the screener, in this case Klingon, hangs back. But that means that that opens things up for UConn's guards, both for shooting and for driving. So that becomes a big time problem, making Zach Eady guard in space. But beyond that, you know, Klingon is seven uh, two. They also have Samson Johnson, who's a six foot ten forward coming off the bench. They have a lot of guys who can help. So it's a schematic thing. You kind of crowd ED space. Again, you're not going to hold them to eight points, but you also don't want him to get forty. Um, and you want to be able to guard him in a way that doesn't completely leave open those three point shooters. So if you had to tilt in one direction, Rich, um, you know, I'm not great at math, but I do think that three is more than two. So you kind of <laughs> almost let ED get his and then stay at home on, on, on the three-point shooters. But, you know, UConn's size advantage really translates even more so to the perimeter. Stefan Castle, their freshman, he's 6'6". Hmm. Tristan Newton uh, is 6'4". 
is six four. Cam Spencer, Cam Spencer, is six foot four. So their guards are bigger than all of Purdue's guards on the perimeter. That's a very uh, troublesome proposition for Purdue because if you look at the way that NC State guarded them, Braden Smith, um, Purdue's sophomore point guard, has had an outstanding season. Had probably his worst game of the year going up against those NC State guards who did a really good job on him. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free. 